Sexy Sims, and we are back with more Seven Scarlet, and possibly the last part. I don't know. Um, we're this is the odds and ends. So, oh, you know, well, we'll do it at the end. Um, we didn't look at the new CGs we got from Toa's the true ending. I suppose I should have done in the last part what we should have done is done the extended happy ending of Toa, but I didn't think that doing the extended Yuzuki stuff and whatever was gonna be. Um. I thought there might have been more of, like, I thought the reason why maybe we couldn't do this until Toa, after the true ra the true ending, was because maybe they mentioned in here that Toa's a revenant. But that never happened, so I don't really know why we couldn't have this, you know what I mean? Like, why that didn't exist before we're doing the true route. But anyway, I thought it would be better to do these because I figure they're not going to be great because obviously, what, as we saw in the bad ending... We died with Yuzuki, and we're going to do the extended version of the normal end, which he's dead. So, that, I mean, that's sad. And then we were going to do the happy, the extended happy end of Toa to make us feel better about Toa just fading away as a revenant because that fucking sucked, and I'm still angry at this game that that's the true end. Fuck that. Um, and then do the super secret side kind of path thing um, that there is. Uh, so hopefully we'll get to that in this part, but we're going to now continue where we are. So it, it, it's a little disjointed and weird. I should have done Toa's happy ending so that we were on a Toa part. We ended on a Toa and then we did this and then we did the super, but I just, I didn't think it was going to take that long to do that. I didn't think 20, it was going to be 25 minutes just to do that ending, the bad end. So I don't know. We'll see what happens. So we're doing the odds and ends. And besides, I just, I just wanted us to end on a happy note, but we didn't. That last part sucked. Um, because it was kind of sad and everything. And, to and the last two parts have just been depressing. So hopefully this one ends on a better note. Because we'll end on either the super secret side thing. Or Toe is happy depending on where we go. But anyway. We decided in this one we're going to look away. I looked away. I look away. Okay, hold on. How is that? Okay, that was pointless. That was pointless. That was not extended at all. Unless there's an after scene. No, there's not. So, the only... Okay. All right, so I get it. So, the point of that was really just to get that other additional bad ending. So, because what happened, we'd normally look away and that's okay. So we could have done that in the last part. We could have done that, done the door and then found that and then done the, and we could have, <sighs> when it says it's extended, I think it's more than extended than like, I see this and I choose to look away and we do the exact same thing. Or now I choose to follow him. <sighs> oh my God. Um, anyway, so what we're going to do now is we're going to load the Toa save where we, get the additional, the extended happy end, which who knows. So let's see, it's this one. Because it's at the, why did you pick me? After completing Toa's true route, you get an additional entry in the tips and a sort a short extension of Toa's happy ending. Okay. So a short extension of Toa's happy ending, it's really gonna be longer because we're gonna skim through all this stuff, so. But here's what I don't understand. So the true ending is he's a revenant and he fades away. So in his route, though, see, so like they're doing this, remember? Like, remember doing this? And he's like, he's not a revenant. He doesn't have any marks on his back. Jesus fuck Christ, get off of him. Right? But Toa really is. So he knows he's a revenant this whole time. And then how is it a happy end? Because like when we leave, we're like, yay, we're with him. We're happy. Great. Everything's great. But then he's just going to fade away and disappear. How is that happy? No, no, his happy end is not happy. Unless we're supposed to infer in his happy end that he's not really a revenant and at all. You know what I mean? Like, he's not a revenant. Nope. But, but he is. So I just... Extended happy end. If he fucking fades away in his extended happy end, I'm gonna fucking cry. Like, I will kill you. Kicks the 
Cats, how dare you? Okay, so this is kind of like blah, 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 and then they catch him. Right? Toa, let's get out of here. That's what we're supposed to do. So these are the way, this is the way we did it to get the happy ending. And then, so this is kind of what happened, right? We got out of there. But then we found out Toa's a revenant. <laughs> So, but, so, what's his name? Oh, that's right, because this is where he tells us about the marble. So he didn't tell us, because technically, right, that scene, that scene where we decided to run away with Toa, that's kind of where it pops in in the true ending, where, oh, now Tsukiyomi's like, oh, there's a there's another revenant at the Foreign Gun Hotel, and that's where we all, and then, you know, it comes out. So this is the, we're pretending that didn't happen, I guess. There's, we're pretending there's not another revenant. And he's like, by the way, my dead body's under there. <laughs> so depressing. After completing, you can get additional entry into the t in a short extension of Toa's happy ending. Did we do it already? Did we do the short extension of Toa's happy ending? When we did Toa's route? Oh, here we go. It's Okay. All right. I was like... We get an extension of it, but it's the same thing. Okay, because it's after the credits. Okay. I was like, wh I was wondering if we did it, but then I was thinking we can't because after Toe is true route, you get the extension. Anyway, my beloved, by the time you open this letter, I'll have left this world. I'm sorry. Fuck! A letter. This letter was mailed two days ago by Yua, who had been holding on to it. He did fucking still die. Fuck this game! It's supposed to be an extended happy ending. Fuck this game. It's like, you get an extension of the happy ending. Yay! No, he's still fucking gone. He's still a revenant. Fuck you. Fuck you, game. Oh! We did this wrong. Dying with Yuzuki would have been better. That bad ending was better than this good ending. Fuck this game. There's one thing I couldn't tell you, and that's that I'm a revenant. Was a revenant. It's a bit much to accept all at once, isn't it? However, please believe me as you read this. Because I wouldn't joke with you about something so serious. If I don't show up on the news, please call Gamaki and tell her to search the river under the bridge to Okanazato. That's where my body is sleeping. I think I became a revenant to meet you. It hurt so much and it was so hard. I cursed my fate. When I touched you, I... I was grateful for the life I had. Thankful for the wonderful ending fate had in store for me. So I don't regret anything anymore. I can go now with thoughts of you remaining with me. After I put this letter in the mail, I think I'm going to go to that overlook. I'd like to look down on this world from up high. Just one last time, and then I'll disappear. I don't have any more time left, so I'm going to wrap this up. I love you. I love you so much. Thank you for loving me back. I'm just going ahead of you to the other side. Don't worry about me. Oh, cats are gathering around me again. I think they're going to guide me. Well, goodbye. Toa Kushinata. Fuck that extended happy end! How is that an extension of happy? Fuck this game doesn't know what the word happy is! Oh my god! Oh my god. Alright. So I'm assuming we have to start a new game. So, we're gonna do... Okay, we're gonna... Oh, you know what? Before we do that, let's go to the memory. Let's look at Toa's new things that we unlocked from the last one. Because we didn't look at those. So, like, baby Toa. It's funny, because he has purple hair. It's not like it was dyed that color, so it's just, like, legit. They look nothing alike. Oh. I don't know how they call that an extended happy end. The true ending was... Painful and awful, but still better than the end of the true end where he just wrote us a letter and we didn't get to watch him. Like, you know what I mean? I'm just so sad that Toa was a rabbit. This is so mean. This game is awful. It's so bad. I hate it so much. I love it. I really do love this game, but I hate it because I can't. 
You're like, a happy ending. Good. We can pretend that Toe is not a revenant and that never happened. And then he's like, by the way, I'm a revenant. Peace out. Fuck you, game. Oh, you thought that knife couldn't go any deeper. I'm sorry, but this is how we're going to end this game. I don't care what other CGs we unlock. This is how we're ending this game. It's going to be, this is it. So that you can hurt forever. Oh, okay. All right. So now let's go start. Uh, let's do new game. And we'll see when you lock the new route. So the super secret hidden route. It's not really a route because it's, you complete all the routes, including Toa's true route. There's only one ending to this route. So there's no wrong choices. Play as you wish. This is Hanate's route, and Hanate is our fucking brother. So, there you go. But the weird thing is, is his last name is not the same as ours. So, yeah, there you go. Start from the beginning. Which, I don't know, it could be long, it could be short. I'm not really sure how long it is, so I'm assuming that it's not too super long. Hey. Hey, are you awake? I have your meal. I'll leave it here. You're so stubborn. It's been an entire year already. And now you're emaciated. What a waste of those good looks. You must get by... You must get it by... You must... Uh, you must get it by now, right? This isn't that simple. Yet you've stayed silent for all this time without breaking. You're insane. Don't you think you're just making it more difficult on yourself? Just spit it out already. Tell us who you really are. They've kept our brother in a fucking cage for a year. Why are you wasting your breath? Why? Because I never thought we'd have to watch him for this long. The least I can do is try to get him to talk, you know? I suppose I agree with you there. Anyway, look. Oh, the usual list of guests staying at the Foreign Con Hotel. Can't believe there are people who actually want to visit a place like this. Wow, isn't this more than usual? Yeah, I thought it was strange too. I heard a bunch of people who met on some online site are gathering for a meeting. Weird. What a quiet world we live in. Well, unfortunately, that means more work for us. True. But there's nothing we can do about that. Every year the revenants tr tend to hide themselves among the hotel guests. Sad. We know one of them. <laughs> They're trying to smoke out the one who created the site. We might have to intervene depending on what happens. I also heard that a famous celebrity is going to hold a concert here pretty soon. So we'll have to be on alert during that, too. Ugh, why does all that have to happen now of all times? Give us a break already. It's easy for the revenants to blend in wherever there's a crowd of people. We'll just have to keep an eye out while we fulfill our duties. In any case, look over the list of guests. We might end up having to spy on them. Okay, okay, got it. Hmm, I feel like I've heard a lot of these names somewhere before. Maybe it's just my imagination. Stuff like that happens the older you get. Hmm, wait a second. What is it? I've definitely heard this name. Oh, it, it's her. She's one of those, you know, those. Caused a lot of commotion a while ago. You need to be more specific. <gasps> she knows about us being an albino. And then that's why we're hold, she's hold, our brother isn't saying anything, because he must know. You know, she's one of those, whatchamacallit. Oh, th that's it. An albino. She's an albino. Show me the list. Who are you talking about? Here, this girl. There's no mistake. I remember it. It was back when I first joined the Ensepultures. She was here during the summer once when she was a kid. After a few weeks, she went missing and we never found her. Is that right? Then we need to report this to the boss. Let's go. No. Don't come here. You can't come here. He's been trapped for an entire fucking year, guys. A fucking year! We'll let the intro play, because it's... Wow, we estimate the power to your area will be restored no later than Monday, 917. I still have power. I never lost power. Like, okay. Thank God. Oy. Okay, so. Oops. 
I feel really just sad about Tom. <laughs> oh. That's so fucking depressing. It's the most depressing fucking end to a game ever. We're, we're about to go and find out what happened to our brother, and I'm like, doesn't matter, I don't even care. Fuck this shit! Literally want to flip everything in my apartment and just storm out. I'm done with this life. I'm out! Oh. Oh, more toys! Oh, no! That's so not even right! I can't get over it! It hurts too much! Doesn't make me feel any better about what happened to him. Ah! Uh, hmm? What's wrong? Oh, it's nothing. Really? You look pale. Did I tie your sash too tight? I'm fine. Hey, you're not going to the summer festival, Yua. I still have work to do, so I'll go after I finish that up. I don't know if I'll be able to meet up with you, though. Someone invited you to go with them, right? Oh, yeah, I guess. Woo! Nice going. Have fun. It's not really that big of a deal. But the voice I heard in my head earlier, that was, that was definitely my brother. He was calling out to me. That's the feeling I get. Thin sunbeams streaming through the window. My brother is somewhere in this town. I don't have any proof, but something inside has convinced me. I can just feel it. Okay, done. Th thanks, Yua. All right, then. See ya. Bye. If it asks me who we're going with, we're fucking going with Toa, even though I want to be like, we shouldn't do it. We should just pretend that never happened. I... I go down to the lobby dressed in my yukata. The voice is still ringing in my head. My brother's voice. My brother is calling out to me. I look around the lobby. Something is tugging at my heartstrings. What could it be? I feel like I'm overlooking an important message. Oh, whatever are you doing here? Oh, hey, Mr. Sukuyomi. Oh, no. Oh, I see you're about to head to the festival. That yukata looks great on you. <gasps> You know what? You should have kept your mouth fucking shut, and we never would have known Toa was a revenant, and he never would have died, because... Fuck it. Thank you very much. I had planned on going to the festival, but now I'm not so sure. Really? What changed your... Oh, do you remember my request from this morning to model for me? Maybe you could do that now. I even have my camera with me. No, you're gonna kill me, you bitch. Uh, model for you. It won't take much of your time. See, we should have known he was shady. Look at that shady look in his face. I'm happy that you want to take me to take pictures. I'm happy that you want me to take pictures of me. That you want to take pictures of me. But I don't feel like it right now. You'll get into the mood once we start. Trust me. That sounds a little creepy. Like, wow. Oh, I know. Why don't we take some shots out by the river behind the hotel? What? No, I... Yes, it's a great idea. You're all dressed up in a yukata and everything. I'm sure I'll be able to get some beautiful shots. Okay, right this way. Uh, no, wait! By the river. I'm not so sure that's a suitable place to take photos. I have no idea who's saying that, but... Huh? Oh, that was Yuki. Okay, anyway. There are hardly any lights out there, which I feel would make it difficult to take photographs at night. Oh, it's you, Yuki. You startled me. I didn't think anyone else was around. I'm currently looking after the hotel. Speaking of Yukata, they go well with flowers. Why don't you have your photo shoot in the garden? It would be much more picturesque. Uh, no, that occurred to me as well. However, I need special permission to take photos on the hotel premises, so... Don't worry about that. I'll give you permission. Although I'd be pleased if you could mention the Foreign Con Hotel when your photos are published. V very well. If I have permission, the garden would be a great location. Okay, let's take some pictures over there in the garden, then. Huh? Oh, right. Aha, because there'll be people there. Oh, hey, Toa. Oh! <gasps> Oh, hold on. I just need to pet his precious face. <laughs> oh, God, it still hurts. Of course, because I played all the other parts just before. anyway. Oh, what's up? I thought you'd already be at the festival. Oh, I did go, actually. I found a hungry kitten, so I fed it some takoyaki. But then I remembered that I forgot to lock the door to my room, so I couldn't stop worrying about it. So I came back. 
and you didn't show up either. I'm sorry. I'm not feeling very well, so... I decided not to go to the festival. I'm really sorry, Toa. I really am, Toa. I love you so much. Oh, it's fine. I was being pushy asking you to come with me. So, are you off to go do something? Yes, whatever. Yeah, Toa and I had plans. Toa, save me. They're having a photo shoot. You could join in if you'd like, Mr. Kushinana. Huh? What kind of a photo shoot? He's taking pictures of her. Mr. Sukuyomi asked her to model for him. <sighs> oh, I see. Maybe I'll watch then. Not you too, Toa. I wasn't actually planning on going along with this. Well then, Mr. Sukuyomi, I'll volunteer as your assistant. Shall we go? Yuki winks at me. Goodness, I didn't think I'd gather such a crowd of people. Mr. Sukiyomi goes outside, scratching his head in bewilderment. Yeah, because he was going to murder me. Not completely sure what I'm getting myself into. I head outside for the evening photo shoot. Mr. Sukiyomi takes photos of me in the garden for about an hour as Yuki and Toa look on. During the shoot, the fireworks show can be seen in the distance. Yuki tells me that they're being shot off from the middle school in the center of town. We're able to watch them when we stop to take a break. Yuki, Toa, thank you both so much. Don't mention it. Where's Mr. Sukiyomi? He went back to his room. He said he wanted to look at the photos he just took. I see. Well, it seemed like Mr. Sukiyomi was being rather forceful, so I decided to intervene. I apologize if I was too forward. No, I'm really glad you stepped in. If you hadn't been there, he would have dragged me out to the river. I should have put my foot down and told him no. It seems to me that he wanted to get you alone. Must be difficult being so popular. You think he wanted to get her alone? R really? I don't think that was his intention. Anyway, did you lock your door, Toa? Huh? Oh, th that's right. Sorry, but I have to go. Will you be returning to your room as well? Oh, yeah. There's something that's been bothering me. Maybe I said that because deep down I feel like I can trust Yuki. Something that's been bothering you? Whatever could it be? I'm not really sure myself. It just feels like I'm forgetting something that's really important. I'm not sure I understand. However, if that's how you feel, then I'm sure it's quite significant. I'll leave you alone to think on it. I'll be in the staff room if you need me. Just call. Okay, thanks. I focus on thinking about it. Is there something here that could jog my memory? I guess it's like... You can do anything. Okay, so we're gonna just do all the choices, I guess. I decide to check the bell by the door. When I ring it, it lets out a long reverberating dingling. Hmm, it's not really reminding me of anything. It's gonna be the wind chimes. That's not, um, that's not... Remember, she kept saying, remember, like, focus on the wind chimes. Yeah, okay, check the staff room. <clears throat> I peek inside the staff room. Yuki's inside with his back turned to me. I shouldn't interrupt his work. Check the couch. I decide to check the couch. It seems like a completely normal couch. There's really not much to inspect. However, I stare at it for a bit. Oh, it ends our search. Okay. Now that I think of it, I remember. I recall the events of that morning. My eyes suddenly fall on the couch in the lobby. Someone's sitting on it, holding a newspaper. It appears to be a guy, but I can't tell from here. Who could it be? He doesn't seem like someone who's a guest here. Who is he? Okay, I do remember this, but... Like, we saw someone, and we just, like, it just... If we take a better angle, I might not... I might be able to see his face. I remember the man who was sitting on the couch in the morning. He was holding a newspaper in front of his face. He was trying to hide. He later disappeared while I was talking to Yuki and Mr. Sukiyomi. He didn't seem like someone who was staying here at the hotel. Even Yuki seemed to be curious about him. Uh -huh. I lean over and check the bottom of the couch. Maybe I'm going overboard. I check between the cushions and on top of the small coffee table, anywhere I can think of. But I don't find anything out of place. I guess there's nothing here after all. The instant I get up, Yuki comes back into the lobby. Is there something wrong with the couch? Yeah, do you remember the guy who was sitting here this morning? He was holding a newspaper, covering his face. Yes, I remember. I didn't get a good look at him and he vanished so quickly. All I can recall is that he was reading the newspaper. Do people other than guests use this lobby? Sometimes, yes. This is a hotel, after all. I glimpsed someone who seems to know Mr. Mr. Kushinata as well. Plenty of people coming here from the cafe. Oh, I see. I don't know if it has anything to do with this uh, with man, but I did happen to find this. 
Yuki shows me an envelope. A letter? Yes, I found it this evening under the couch. He hands the envelope to me. Huh, is it okay if I read it? In any case, I've come to a conclusion that I shouldn't read it, so it's yours. What do you mean? I'm not sure what he's getting at, but I take the envelope from him. Inside is... The letter is addressed to me. It's for me? Yuki nods. But it doesn't say who it's from. Indeed, it seems suspicious, so I opened it. Or at least I thought about opening it. However, I saw that it was addressed to you, and I decided it would be rude, so I left it alone. From what I could tell, there seems to be a single sheet of paper inside. For all we know, it could be a love letter. There's a rumor going around my school that the hotel has hired a cute new part-time worker. Huh? Well, I still have work that needs to be done. Please excuse me. Oh, okay. Thanks, Yuki. I mean, everybody in this hotel loves you. Especially the poor revenant that is to us good to... <laughs> I look at the envelope once more. The words are written in neat, blocky letters, perhaps to disguise the person's handwriting. Maybe the person who was sitting on the couch... If he left it there, one of the hotel employees would be bound to find it, and they'd very likely give it to me. In fact, it did find its way into my hands. Well, I can't be sure that it's from the guy who was sitting on the couch this morning. There shouldn't be any harm in looking at it, though, so I open the envelope. Inside is a single sheet of paper that's folded four times. I open it up. Oh! Go through the tunnel and search for the shrine. Don't trust anyone. That's my brother's handwriting. The next day, Hino and I finish our work in the morning and we spend the afternoon walking around looking for my brother. We didn't learn anything in town, so today we decided to look at the mountains. Yuki told us about a good spot to investigate. I purposely decided not to tell Hino about the letter because it said not to trust anyone. I've never once gone against something my brother told me to do. But I do feel guilty for hiding the truth from Hino. Sorry, Hino. <laughs> After walking around a few hours, we finally find a tunnel. It's just like Yuki said. Who knew there was a tunnel here? It looks like this tunnel is this is the end of the road. The tunnel goes up into the mountain. No one's allowed to enter it, right? That's what Yuki said. There are landslides up there sometimes, so the locals stay away. Well, it's got nothing to do with us outsiders. What do you want to do? Want to go in? But it's pitch black. Yeah, it'd be hard to navigate without a good flashlight. I really can't imagine your brother living up there in the mountain, either. The sun's setting, so why don't we call it a day and go back to the hotel? Okay. <clears throat> we should have gone out by ourselves. I'll continue on by myself from here. You know... Hmm? What's up? I'm gonna do some shopping before I head back, so go ahead and return to the hotel without me, okay? Hey, I don't mind. Do you want me to come with you? No, that's okay. I'm not sure what I'm looking for, so it might take a while. I'll be back before it gets too late, though, so don't worry. You know, hesitates for a moment, then nods. Fine, then I'm heading back. Be careful. Thanks, I will. Once Hino disappears from view, I run back toward the tunnel. I can't wait another second. If my brother really is on the other side of this tunnel, I have to see him. Didn't we investigate out here? I'm a little uneasy about going in without a flashlight, but if I walk with my hand along the wall, I'll eventually get to the other side. I step into the darkness, leaving the gloom of the outside world behind me. He must have escaped. The darkness seems to go on forever. I haven't walked that far, but the light from the entrance is already fading. It's fine. I'll be okay. My words are swallowed by the shadows. I hear a clunking noise behind me. It sounded like someone kicked a stone. I instinctively turn around. I see the light from the entrance in the distance. In the midst of those small rays of light is... a person. My heart jumps for a moment, but I immediately realize that it's Hino. He must have come after me. I can imagine him doing that. He must have decided to follow me because he was worried about me. Oh, Hino! I have no choice. I have to think of an excuse. I stare at him for a while, but he doesn't move an inch. Oh, he must not be able to see me. From back there, all he can see ahead is darkness, so he probably hasn't noticed that I'm here. I call out to him. Hino! The person turns in surprise. Then, it looks like they put something on over their head. Hmm. That confuses me. The next thing I know, the figure is running towards me. Huh? It's the cat dude. The rapidly approaching figure terrifies me. That's not Hino. The figure closes in on me. What? I see a person in a cat mask. It's Tsukuyomi, yeah. I lose my ability to speak as the person in the cat mask comes closer and puts their hands on my shoulders. I finally found you. <laughs> a man's voice. 
man's hands move from my shoulders to my throat, interrupting my thought process. Then, his fat fingers dig into my skin. How is this? No! I fear for my life. Mwahaha! <laughs> it's hard to breathe. He's going to kill me. Gah! There's a dull thud and the man's fingers release their grip around my throat. I hear him collapse in the darkness. Ow, that hurts. Who's there? Who the heck is there? We can't give him totally Mr. Tsukiyomi's voice, you know, because what in the world is going on? Someone takes my hand, but it isn't the large, fat hand that was just trying to choke me. This way. What? I get pulled along as we run through the darkness. The darkness goes on forever and ever. Eventually, a tiny speck of light appears. It slowly gets bigger as we approach it. I finally make it out of the tunnel. We can't stop here. He might still be chasing after us. I turn around to see the guy who saved me. What? I find myself holding my breath. The person standing before me is... Our brother! Oh, He's so adorable. B brother Next thing I know, I'm enveloped in a familiar fragrance. A mysteriously sweet aroma. My brother's scent. Oh, Hanate, it's really you! Yes, it's me. His warm, kind voice and his large hands... The arms that embraced me whenever I was sad, in pain, happy, or overjoyed. And he is so, like, because I opened op the character card. So, like, when I scrolled and I saw that we got a route with him, I'm like, that explains why there's a character card for him. Because she always says, my brother, my brother, my brother. She never once says his motherfucking name throughout the entire game. And But I'm like, so who the hell is the character? And I was like, oh, it's her brother. Okay. But his character card. But Because I, I remember looking through the beginning and being like, he's hot. And I'm like, he's our brother. That's gross. <laughs> But he is, he's pretty goddamn dreamy, so, like, I mean. Yes, this person is unmistakably my beloved brother. The instant I realize that, my vision blurs with tears. I should have realized because he's got purple eyes like us, but. I know this isn't the time to be crying, but I'm just so happy. Brother, where did you go? I was so worried about you. Sorry. You left me all alone. I was so lonely. I know. Sorry. You're such an idiot. I'm really sorry. Nate, hmm? I'm so glad you're okay. But like we never find him otherwise. The tears I was holding back are now streaming down my cheeks. He squeezes me in his arms. We press together and I bury my face in his neck. This is the most calming place in the world. I have so many things I want to ask him. I look up at him and speak. Brother, it hurts so much. Yeah, I know. I don't have the time to explain right now. We need to get to the shrine up ahead takes my hand. Can you run? Yeah. He smiles, so it's so nostalgic. We have different last names, which is weird. He pulls me along up the mountain. There's no path to follow. There's a shrine here? Yeah, it's not being used anymore. It used to be the Okune Shrine for a long, uh, a long time ago. Uh, but the sacred uh, Go Shintai... That houses the deity's spirit was relocated to the town. Why? That's simple, because it was too much of a pain to come all the way up here into the mountain. It used to be tradition to brave the long climb up here to be able to pray, but through the generations, people grew tired of it. People tend to do whatever's most convenient. This generation in particular has that tendency, don't you think? The passage of time is... Mm, what? Is there something on my face? Brother, it's really you. Don't keep calling him brother. It feels weird. I mean, I know, you know, but like, but it just seems, it's, it just sounds weird when you translate it in English. It was like, brother, like, just, in English, call him by his name, please, because it's just weird. It seems weird. Brother, I don't call my sister. I don't call my sister, sister. I've never, was, this is my sister when I describe her as a description, not what she, like, she is my sister, but I don't call my sister, sister, oh, sister. Call them by their name, or their nickname, you know. I'm sorry I worried you. It was quite risky for me to go all the way to the Foreign Gone Hotel. But if I hadn't, you never would have been able to find me. Were you the one reading the newspaper in the lobby? Yeah, I wanted to let you know that I was alive. I had no choice but to hide the letter under the couch. I figured one of the employees would find it while they were cleaning. Hey, tell me everything. Why did you come to this town? Why did you disappear? Why... Why? I just can't figure it out. I can't get those questions out of my head. He stares at me. He seems to be hesitating. You're in danger as long as you're here. You need to leave as soon as possible. 
Why? Why would you say that? I have absolutely no idea what's going on. Please, Hanate, you have to tell me. Okay. You're right. You're not a kid anymore. She's not an eight-year-old anymore. He says as if talking to himself. The sound of insects echoes in the otherwise silent forest. Finally, my brother looks at me like he's made up his mind. Hey, if I tell you everything, do you think you'll be able to accept it? Of course! I'll believe anything you say! I don't want you to accept just the truth. Huh? After you know everything, will you be able to accept... me? Oh my god! Dun dun dun! This might be long. This might be longer than one part. Oh my god, that was like... <laughs> 12 years ago! Okay, shit. Like... I've never woken up. It's only natural for one who's never slept. The light of the sun, the darkness of night, these mean nothing to me. I don't have a reason to live. All that I am permitted is simply... All that I'm permitted is to simply be. Because of her impassioned curse. All I can do is exist in this insane, colorless world. Interesting. I have no idea when I was reborn as a revenant. No, trying to remember is futile. The concept of time itself is ludicrous. Humans created the concept of time. Time governs everything. You could say that humans are bound by it. Oh my god, did we die here? Because remember she said that she just magically... Remember that girl that just disappeared? <gasps> oh my god. And didn't someone say something about... Oh, Sosuke said something about someone that looked like your brother when he found... Wasn't Sosuke the one who found the Velocias? Because Hanate has been a revenant. But how could... Are we revenants? Are we both revenants? But if we died as kids, why are we adults? Why do we age? Oh my god, this is interesting. Unless he was our way, way older brother. But Hino remembers him. And wouldn't Hino be like, I don't remember your brother. This is weird. Anyway. Okay, humans created the concept of time. Time governs, governs everything. You could say the humans are bound by it. Time, that's where humans went wrong, right? As long as humans serve the fictitious god known as time, we'll never know the truth of this world. Because humans have put limits on their own lives. I'm hungry. I'm so very hungry. My soul is ravenous. The gloomy rainy season passes, and the Violacias bloom proudly once again this year. These mysterious flowers live until the end of summer. They grow in this valley of death, opening their violet petals unbeknownst to anyone. I'm expecting another great show this year. Now how many revenants will we see? I say, admiring the flower petals. I know a monologue, but it's but it's Hanate, so I don't know why. Like, I figured it was him, but... And the Violacias dance happily in the wind. It's an ocean of purple. Every once in a while, a scarlet flower appears among them. Scarlet, the color of human blood. I search carefully for those scarlet Velocias. Only one? This year's going to be boring. The number of revenants that appear in town match the number of scarlet Velocias that bloom in this field. This year there's just one. Whatever. It's just a way to kill time anyway. I suppose I'll just have to make the most of it. None of the revenants who came after me stayed in this world for very long. None of the revenants who came after me. He's a fucking revenant. Oh my god. They're all fools. All they think, can think about is satisfying their insatiable hunger. I laugh again, imagining the absurd, inhuman pageant that's about to take place. I love the moment when the Revenant is reborn. There are always those to, that desperately crave their precious life and past experiences. They come back to this world after suffering so much pain, only to suffer even more and vanish once again. So he's been doing this for a while. But I'm wondering if he's a revenant in hell. Like he said, he's been a revenant because of our curse. Something about we did something. Hmm, this is interesting. Knowing how consumed they are with life, the instant they disappear, I laugh so hard my stomach hurts. There's even a group called the Ensepultures who hunt revenants. Humans are so ridiculous. At least it's an interesting twist. The hunters and the hunted. There isn't a more amusing spectacle on Earth. Her brother sounds a little fucked up. I know full well that I'm not normal. Eternity has robbed me of my sanity, but that's fine. This world is too painful to deal with if you have a sound mind. Hanate, what the fuck? I have the power to distinguish revenants from humans. 
likely because I've existed for so long now. No, it's more like an ability that was given to me by the one I hate most. The only revenant this the only revenant this year is a woman. Oh my god, that's not us, is it? It's more like the ability that was given to me by the one I hate most. Uh oh. That's not us, is it? Oh my god. We've been searching for our beloved brother and he hates us. Mm. She seems deeply pained, as if she doesn't know she's a revenant. Which is only natural. While they appear no different from the living, those who have woken as revenants can feel that something is different. Revenants can't see colors. They live in a world of black and white. Black and white? Color is one of the many joys of life, and flowers perfectly embody that sentiment with their brilliant displays of vibrancy. However, revenants cannot see in color because they aren't truly alive. That's why Toa couldn't see the different colors of the fireworks. Shut up and stop reminding me! Not that it's a disadvantage. On the contrary, the eyesight of revenants surpasses that of humans, enabling them to see clearly even in the dark. Mysteriously, however, a number of things do appear in color. That's why it's so easy for me to find the Velocias. Velocias are a vivid shade of purple in this black and white world. Blood, the fluid that flows from the living, providing their claim to life, or proving their claim to life. Blood is a distinct bright red in this monochrome world. The instant I see it, I'm overcome by a powerful desire to kill. So our brothers are revenant, okay. Like a shark catching a whiff of blood in the vast, deep ocean, and that's why Toa was freaked out by the blood too, because he could see it. Maybe that's some sort of message. Maybe it's born from one's obsession with life. A message of grave importance for revenants. It works with those intense colors to compel them in this colorless world. Message! They're always right there for everyone to see, but in this world overflowing with greed... The living often overlook these messages. Just now, a child is tripped in front of the woman, skin knee flowing with blood. I can't turn my eyes from her bewilderment. This very moment, she's likely fighting the urge that's rising within her to kill. At this, I smile. It's begun once again, the summer pageant that only I can see. The woman passes through the gates of, to the foreign gun hotel. This, too, is fate. Revenants are reborn amidst the Velocias. They wake on a bed of violet and instinctively leave the mountain, not knowing what to do. And most of them carve out a place for themselves. Some hide in the shrine or the mountains, but most go to the hotel. They don't have any money, but they don't care. Anything is better than their current confusion. It's likely what she's thinking right now. What will she do? I'm curious to see. I pretend to be one of the locals as I observe her, observe her with amusement. Our brother's a fucked-up individual. I kind of like this. This is interesting. Next day, she wanders around town. She goes in and out of shops, looking closely to the, at their wares. Perhaps she's managed to obtain some money somewhere. She goes from one store to another. She seems to have some sort of goal, although she never enters any restaurants. Revenants have no appetite. They aren't alive. Why would they eat? They can put a bite in their mouth, but they can't taste it. The ability to enjoy food has been stolen from them. Savor good food is one of the joys of life. Revenants are not allowed that luxury. How terribly ironic. Although that does explain again Toa, like, oh, he doesn't eat because it's like he's on a diet. And you're like, oh, it's because he's a celebrity because he can't eat. There's no point in him eating. Oh, my God. So sad. However, drinking does have a small effect, cooling the throat and suppressing the urge to kill, if only temporarily. However, that's only delaying the inevitable. It's nothing more than a temporary appeasement, like when humans smoke tobacco or chew gum. The woman exits the general store, carrying a shopping bag. After she walks past me, I enter the general store. Oh, if it isn't the delivery guy! Have you come on business today, or are you off duty? Hello there, ma'am. I'm off duty today. Or should I say, I'm off duty again? Well, that's nice. Want something? I'll give it to you on the house, since you're such a nice guy. You're always giving me freebies. Keep this up, and you're going to go out of business. True! We've been in dire straits recently. I might just end up having a closed shop. There aren't many tourists coming here these days, you know. The Murakumo family is applying too much pressure. So I've heard. Someone told me earlier that they drove the Hot Springs district into ruins, even though it was the pride of the town. You bet they did. Ugh, I have no idea what they're thinking. It's almost impossible to do business here. <sighs> if only this town had one of those... Mashadot... Mashcat. No, that's what she's trying to say, mascot. Mashcat things. 
Merchandise will be flying off the shelves. By the way, ma'am, did a woman just drop by to do some shopping? Yes, yeah, she did. She looked just like Sa Sakuya, I tell you. Sakuya? A family left this town some time ago, and they had a little girl named Sakuya. The woman was her spitting image. Sakuya, a woman born and raised in Okinazato, she passed away last year. I asked her if her name was Sakuya, but she said I had the wrong person. She seemed to be in a rush to leave after that. Well, it's been ten years now, after all. It's probably just a coincidence. Hmm, so what did she buy? Why do you want to know? Doesn't matter anyway. I can't give out personal information. That's private business. Then I'll have the same thing she got. How much? Oh, I didn't know you were into cooking. Here you go, one chef's knife. That'll be 900 yen. Wait, uh, you're a clever one. That was one of them lead-on quizzes, huh? <laughs> you're the clever one. You run a good business. Okay, here's your money. Now you've sold two chef knives today. Yeah, thanks a bunch. Here's a change. Come again. I like doing general store lady. She's fun. <laughs> I leave the store. Knife. Seems she's made up her mind. She's prepared to kill. <laughs> she appears to be walking around with no particular destination in mind. She wanders by the river, park, and back alleyways. The insepulchers haven't marked her yet. I don't see anyone shadowing her. That is, except for me. She climbs the stairs to the shrine. So this is obviously... So they don't have the mascot yet, right? Because Toa... Well, here's the weird thing. Toa designs the mascot, right? After the... So this is after all of the baths went out of business. So there's no Taurus. But before Toa designs the mascot. So it's kind of in betweenies there, right? Interesting. Because otherwise she's like, it's too bad we don't have one of those mascot things, but you do. So this is before the mascot. But obviously after all of the other stuff went out of business. So so we're just a kid then. This is, oh, well, that's right. It's 12 years ago. Duh. We, we read a giant 12 years ago thing. Spacey's not smart. I forgot that already. She climbs the stairs to the shrine. I know what she's doing. She's looking for prey. Her very first victim. The first attack where the revenant is caught between confusion and desire, is an amazing spectacle to see. Come on, kill your prey, along with my boredom. That's why we have different last names. There isn't a soul to be found at the shrine. The woman looks around as the sun begins to set. She wouldn't have seemed suspicious if she had pretended to pray, but she just walks around as if she's lost even her faith. Then she suddenly stops. She's found what she was looking for. I slowly follow her gaze. There's a little girl there. She's drawing on the ground with something that looks like chalk. She's all alone. The woman begins to tremble. This is it. This is the encounter I've been anticipating. The woman looks around again. I cautiously hide myself in the bushes. The girl continues to pour her soul into her drawing, not noticing either of us. She's so innocent. But the very next instant, I look closer. What? It can't be. Oh, there's no mistake. The little girl... She's Ambrosia. Revenant's Ambro Revenant Ambrosia. Among all humans born into this world, a rare few have refined, cleansed souls. Souls so pure and full of life that Revenant covet them above all else. If a Revenant manages to feed on the Ambrosia, this purified soul will obtain eternal life. The Revenant will never need to kill anyone ever again. Yes, that's correct. Just like me. Revenants instinctively understand that. This woman has probably already realized it. So he's fed on a... Interesting. Um, so is this supposed to be us? But... No, I guess you'd have to kill... Uh, Toa would have had to have killed us to be able to... That's why, though, they feel the energy. Like, it feels like I, I don't have to kill people when I'm around you, right? Yeah, huh? Because we're ambrosia. Albino, ambrosia. Same difference. I like ambrosia better. It makes us sound more special than, I'm an albino! Aw. To happen across a rare ambrosia on her very first hunt, she must have all the luck in the world. No, that's not true. One could never be considered lucky if they were reborn as a revenant. The little girl looks up. She seems to have noticed the woman. 
The woman's mouth curls into a nervous smile as she approaches the girl. Then she squats down and talks to her. Are you all alone? Oh, of course it's us. Yeah? What's your name? What a fool. Asking the name of your prey will only cause you to sympathize with them. It's the worst mistake one can make on their first hunt. My name? I'm Spacey! Spacey Hanamaki! Just then a strange sensation overcomes me. A leveling of anxiety that I've never felt before. As well as an unsettling apprehension. I must save this girl. What? What is this feeling? My chest is hot. I suddenly find myself covered in sweat. There's nothing I can do. What in the world is going on? I know, legit. I can't allow that. I can't allow the woman to kill that girl. What's wrong with me? Why would I save her? Utterly ridic- The woman reaches for a shopping bag. She's gonna act. Shh. There's no way around this. Oh my god! This is so good! It doesn't make up for Toa. It doesn't fucking make up for Toa. But this is interesting. It's definitely going to be more than one part. Are you all alone? I'm surprised that she's suddenly talking to me. My parents told me many times to never talk to strangers, but strangers are always talking to me here. Is this what the countryside is like? If I keep running away whenever anyone talks to me, they're going to think I'm weird. Yeah? So this time I decide to reply. What's your name? My name? I'm Spacey. Spacey Hanamaki. I immediately tell her my name. I'm used to strangers asking me my name here. But something feels off about her. Her mouth is smiling, but her eyes are scary. The woman slowly reaches into her bag. Is she going to give me some candy? No, it doesn't seem like it. She doesn't have a white van. I can feel it. This lady is different. I stand up as I watch her. She takes a step toward me. Just then... Huh, this is weird. Is this not the place? I'm pretty sure this is the correct address. Well, shoot. A man appears out of the shadow of the shrine. Oh, perfect timing. Do you know the name of this shrine? I need to deliver something. The guy talks to us. He's dressed in a delivery uniform. The woman freezes completely, her hands still in the bag. Um, this is the Okuni Shrine. Oh! Is that the the delivery express thing that Hina was chasing after? Remember? At the end of his path? And our brother was driving the van the whole time. Oh my god. Oh my god. This is weird. Our brother could have been driving the van like he saw. I was like, oh my god, I saw the van! It was it was Hanate watching us. Oh my god. Dude, that's so weird. Anyway. That logo on your shirt is super cute. I've never seen a round snake like that. It really is motherfucking cute. Don't you want to squeeze it? Huh? Oh, this? This isn't a snake. It's called, uh, Suchinoko? It's like an imaginary animal. Suchinoko. Oh, whoops. Let's rewind. I forgot to click the thingy. I forgot. And that one I saw because it was colorful. Suchinoko. A snake-like animal said to inhabit Japan. A so-called cryptid. They're known for having a uniformly thick body, unlike snakes. There have been reported sightings of them in every region of Japan, but the, vera the veracity of those claims is always unclear. In some cases, it's considered a supernatural monster, like the Kappa, a river imp from Japanese folklore. There's a round snake printed on its back. It has a little red tongue poking out of its mouth. It's so cute. Is this the first time you've seen this logo? I'd have thought that you could find it all over town. I'm not from here. I just came to play for the summer. I'm staying at someone else's house. Oh, really? Then I guess it would be your first time seeing it. It's pretty unique to this town. As I'm talking with the delivery guy, the woman suddenly bows her head and walks away. Her pace quickens as she disappears down the steps. The guy watches her leave. There's a picture of a uh, Suchinoko on his hat, too. kind of want it. Hey, you should be careful around that woman. Huh? Well, why? Why? Because she's a ghost. 
A ghost? <laughs> you're silly. Ghosts aren't real. <laughs> but she might try to talk to you again because you're so cute. I was joking about her being a ghost, but there are bad people even out here in the country, you know. Kidnappings aren't all that rare. If you think you're in trouble, you should yell or run away. Anyway, be careful around strangers. Don't follow them anywhere. Yeah, okay. You're a nice guy. Hey, what's your name? My name... My name is... Uh... I'm... Hanate. Hanate Yats... Yatsukami. Yeah. I had to pause for a second. Yatsukami. Hmm, you can call me Hannah. That sounds like a girl's name. I'll call you Big Brother Hanate. You can call me whatever you want. Come on, it's time to go home. Could you show me that, uh, Suchinoko first? It's so cute. It's not scary at all, even though it's a snake. And that's because it's not a snake. Okay, fine. Hey, if you like it so much, do you want to see my truck? Now that sounds creepy. This lady was going to stab me and you're going to put me in a fucking truck. It has a much larger picture of it. It's pretty impressive. Yeah, I want to see it. Where's your truck? Come on, let's go. Way too trusting. Hey, didn't I just tell you not to follow people you don't know? Meanie, why'd you say that if you're not going to show me? <sighs> Fine. Okay, then. Once you get a good look at the truck, you're going to go straight home. And no more playing by yourself, ever. Promise me that, at least. Okay, should we pinky promise? He smiles and nods. His pinky is surprisingly big. Adults are huge. The first time we met our older brother, who's not our fucking older brother. To me, who has eternal life, there's nothing, nothing more useless than time. I've never been a slave to the concept of time. I don't grow old, and I can't remember being young. I don't gain or lose weight. My appearance never changes. I spent hundreds of years like this. Oh my god. Humans pass on their legacies and vanish from this earth. As they do, towns change little by little. But the townspeople pay no mind to me. One who never changes. They adjust their memories of me to suit their purposes. Sometimes I'm a farmer who lives on the mountain. Other times I'm a wandering samurai. I can pretend to be anyone I want, and their memories will follow suit. Perhaps this is also a power I have obtained after existing in this world for so long. Another ability bestowed upon me by the one I hate most. I can be absolutely anything in this town, but at the same time, my existence means nothing. I'm alone. I'm all by myself in the depths of solitude. As revenants appear and murder the living, I can almost feel my loneliness fading away. I find meaning in my existence by mocking the pain of revenants. Someone's watching the girl's every move as she plays in the park. A man who's a member of the Ensepultures. But all he does is stare at her from afar. He never gets close to her. Are the Ensepultures suspicious of her? They know those rare humans who are like Ambrosia to us. A revenant they caught decades back let it slip. A revenant who failed to partake of an Ambrosia. The Ensepultures caught the revenant, and it told them everything, thinking it would save it. That only got it exterminated. What a fool. The Ensepultures now refer to those pure souls as albinos, which is an interesting word choice. Those with refined souls have just one visibly defining feature, their eyes. Their pupils shine a faint shade of red. True albinos, those rare few that suffer from the lo a loss of pigment, have the same kind of eyes. The name's stuck, and now they're albinos. I like ambrosia better. But that explains it because, right? Our eyes are purple, but to revenants who can't see in color, they would see the red in our eyes. Mm -hmm. The one who gave them that name must be proud. And the curl I saved by the shrine is no exception. Her eyes have a faint red glow as well. If someone's eyes often appear red in pictures, the person needs to be watched, because they could be an albino, or rather, ambrosia. The insepultures are likely shadowing that girl precisely because of that. She draws revenants to herself. Ugh, she always manages to have the worst sort of people following her around. <laughs> Including you! She plays innocently with a boy she met in town, unaware that anyone's watching her. I leave. Being careful not to be noticed, the Ensepultures will grow suspicious of me if I watch her any longer. That would cause me a great deal of trouble, even if they are only humans. When I leave the alley, I sense someone approaching, so I immediately hide behind a stone wall. It's that woman. 
Her eyes look more empty and her cheeks are more sunken than they did yesterday. Uneasiness and impatience seem to be controlling her now. It's been almost a week since she was reborn. She's given herself over to her hunger. She must now be at her limits. She seems to be persistently pursuing that girl, which is only natural, really. The woman will probably do anything she can to kill her. And she'll suck all the life out of her, standing over a corpse, eternally satisfying her hunger. I can't let that happen. Something pulses inside of me. What? What is this? Something happened to me. No, I'm a revenant. I can't change. What in the world is this feeling? My forehead is drenched with sweat. An indescribable wave of anxiety runs through me. I'm confused. In all my hundreds of years of being a revenant, I've never once experienced this incomprehensible feeling. There's just one thing I'm sure of, and that's the cause. It's that girl. She's doing something to me. I gather all the knowledge I possess and attempt to determine why. Is it because I so desperately want to consume the Ambrosia? That can't be it. I have absolutely no urge to kill her. What is it? It's creating this desire within me. He has purple eyes like this, though. Like, so he looked like he could legitimately be our brother. So I wonder if he's like an ancestor. You know what I mean? Because we're from this town. I turn back toward the park, but I stop myself. What will I accomplish by going there? Should I save her again? Without even knowing why? I turn on my heels and return to the park. Stop this. It's dangerous. The ensipultures are watching. I stop in my tracks. This is ridiculous. I'm hesitating. I have no idea what I should do. As I stand there, a figure appears. I hide myself behind the stone wall again. That woman is back. Did she kill the girl? No, it doesn't look like it. She probably gave up because there were too many people around. She looks just as desperate as before. She's dragging her feet as she walks. She has a follower in tow. A man appears about a hundred feet behind her. It's the one who belongs to the Ensepultures. He's recognized that she's a revenant. Good. Exterminate her before she can finish off that girl. Another ridiculous thought. I can't believe I'm supporting the Ensepultures. Somewhere along the line, I've begun caring about that girl's safety. Dun dun dun! Anyway. Um. This is definitely going to go on longer than this. I can't believe this! But anyway, this is fascinating and exciting. So, I thought it was going to be short. I didn't think it was going to be this long. Um, otherwise, you know, we probably wouldn't have kind of started it with... I just figured it was going to be a short little thing. Like, oh, we found her brother. We find things. I didn't think it was going to be. I mean, I guess I should have expected it to be huge and long, but I didn't expect it this way. So anyway, um, we'll continue this in the next part. So I will see you guys next time. Remember to give the video a big thumbs up and subscribe to see more.